There's been an awful lot of talk about 5G recently. That's not really surprising. When it's eventually available, it's supposed to deliver about a thousand times the capacity of today's fastest mobile networks. Well, I've come here to Stockholm in Sweden to the headquarters of Ericsson to find out more about 5G and really where else was I going to go. Ericsson is, after all, one of the leading providers of mobile technology in the world. But I've just found out that apparently inside their demo center here, they actually have a working prototype of a 5G handset. I'm really excited about that because 5G isn't supposed to be available until 2020. So let's go inside and check it out. Hocken, tell, tell us about uh, what are we looking at here? Well, this is actually the first 5G mobile in the world. And, and this turnaround, it is mobile. You know, previous generation, we actually had the first mobile were more stable, a little bit bigger. So this is the smallest first so, mobile we've done of any, any generation. So at some point, all of this is going to get condensed down into something about this big? Yes. How, I mean, how long is that going to take? I mean, we're looking at commercial deployments of 5G roughly 2020. 2020. So we have five years, and if you look back in history, I mean, you need a technology evolution to get you there. Right. And also the other part is, if we wouldn't take into account technology evolution and make something that is more today, yeah. we would be obsolete in five years' time. So it actually, this is the natural way of progressing. You need to dig them. It's a lot of complexity which you can actually not train today. Right. But in five years' time, as I say, we will get it down to this size. But it's not just a proof in concept. It's actually an exercise in yes. development yes. right now. So you can you can change things in here. You can experiment. You can, and I guess software is a big part of this as well, yes. right? Yes. So, so this, as I said, this is a platform for us to learn. So the first step, we get up in frequency. We get wider bandwidth and higher data rates. This one is up and running at roughly. 5.8 gigabit per second uh, but then we will add a lot of more of the technology components into here a lot more advanced beam forming than we have today today it's the basic part with more and more complexity of the functionality again for us to learn because i think this is a good way for us both to learn the performance to do simulations of course but you need to test it in real life right and this way we can also guide the standardization on yeah. what to implement and, and make sure that what we implement is actually in real terms in real environments getting a lot of value. Well, I mean, I, I, what I think this is very important, not just from an engineering uh, point of view, but actually as a proof point yes. for service providers. And I know you showed this in Barcelona at Mobile yes. World Congress. Yes. And I understand that you got a lot of interest in it from service providers, not just because it's really big and exciting, but actually because I mean, I guess they were surprised that it was really working, right? Yes. A lot of people did put in obstruction in the antenna to see that it actually really? was up and running live. So we got a lot of credit for having this up in the booth where people go in and touch it and yeah. really test that it was a live network. Yeah. And we have added a lot of concepts that you see for 5G. We demonstrated dual connectivity, so we're running this and LT in parallel to this uh, mobile. Right. And could show how we can move the load in a way that doesn't at all affect the user performance, yeah. like a 4K video shifted in between these two axes in a way that didn't get a glitch at all in the video. And we also do multi-point connectivity, yeah. so you can connect the two base stations at the same time. So this is again, we're adding more and more proof point of what we can see coming in 5G. But when you had a when you were prototyping 3G and 4G, did you have one of these type yes, of but setups? They were, they were bigger. They were even bigger. So we've actually learned something along the way. Yes. You know, yes. I, th I think that's extraordinary. And I mean, I, I, I don't think most people, you know, generally, particularly consumers, realize how revolutionary 5G is. You know, we're talking about mm -hmm. thousand times yes. the performance. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, in terms of the applications that you could use that for when it becomes available. Yeah, I think that's also exciting with 5G because on one dimension, we do increase the performance of what we, so say, traditionally think of today as a mobile broadband, yes. higher data rates, lower latency, a lot more capacity. But there is also trends now to start seeing how can you utilize 5G in a lot more different contexts, like for vehicle, for remote controlled uh, uh, robotics, yeah. remote control diggers like we had, yeah. and also for different machine type communication. So we're starting to see a 
range of use cases with different set of requirements. Right. So it's not the one-dimensional requirements anymore. Right. It's rather right. a lot of requirements yeah. for these different applications. I, I think you know we started off with cell phones and they supported voice communications, yeah, exactly. and then communications became about data. Yeah. And now you know a thousand times uh, the performance, it becomes. Uh, ubiquitous in terms yeah. of the application that we could use it for and that's it's an amazing story being here yeah. in your demonstration center and looking at the history recent history really yeah. gone from this huge cab cabinet with a few megabits capacity uh, you know climbing up the aerial over there and now here we are really with what actually is quite a historic device it isn't is, it because this is one of the first working prototypes of 5G, as yes. I understand it, is yes. that right? Yes. So yes. you must be quite proud of this. We are. We yeah. are actually our, we have a test bed development team that I think is the top notch in the world. Yeah. We have proven it in previous generation, we have been first out with this type of new concepts, new technology, and I think we've done it this generation also. Yeah. And that is, that is uh, something to be proud of. I, I really think it is, and I mean, I think it's, it's, it's great to have, it must be great to have a job where at the end of the day you, <laughs> you've built something uh, you know, quite as extraordinary as this, and yeah. I'm looking forward to coming back and uh, and, and looking at the, the pocket size one in a few years' time. Yes. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.